Hello everybody, um, my name is Stefan, and I'm just about to start my, uh, my talk. This is a uh, different talk than the talk that's in the schedule, it's because um, I was asked this morning to fill in for a chat that used to, well, he's scheduled in for this talk, uh, but couldn't make it, he's, he's ill. So, I thought, well, yeah, while I'm here, this is what we talk. Um, yeah, thank you for coming. Um, this is my talk about Drupal without coding. Just to get an idea of who is in the room here, um, who, is, who is familiar with Drupal? Are you all familiar with Drupal? Excellent. Right, how many programmers or coders are in the room? Okay, all right. Who is new to Drupal? I mean, sorry, um, are there any themers, front end devs? Yeah? Excellent. Okay. Great stuff. Right, you're okay to start. If you want to make any comments, um, there's a really easy to remember link at the bottom. Must <laughs> should have made that a bit easier, really. So you can leave your comments there, or just find me on Twitter, or just to me after. Try to turn the light down. No, it's fine. Can you not see it? It's a bit skin. Is it? Is that alright? Is that okay? Yeah, the camera might yeah. struggle with that. Sorry. Is that okay? Hopefully it will become clearer in a minute. Right, let's start. Dribble without coding. Okay, before we start, I did this presentation last year actually at Drupal Camp Northwest. Um, yeah, again, my name is Stefan, I'm Dutch from or by origin. And I hear people pronounce the, Drupal, the word Drupal differently every time. So I, sorry, I say it as Drupal. I don't know how you say it. Do you say Drupal? I know a lot of people say Drupal. Does anybody say that? That's fine if you do, that's fine. Um, does everybody know where the word Drupal comes from? Obviously, it's uh, derived from a Dutch, Belgian word. And the actual word is Drupal, which means drop in Dutch, or in the Dutch language. Obviously, Belgian is the same. But if you say it in Dutch, you say Drupal, and that kind of sounds very much like Drupal. And that's how the name came about. Which is a little bit of a language lesson here. Okay, um, what do I do? I run a small business in the southwest of England um, called iCompute. I provide web marketing consultancy services. And I predominantly use, well, I only use Drupal if um, I need to build websites and use other open source tools, for example. Very clearly visible, Pyrwhic at the bottom. I should have moved that up. But Pyrwhic is a, an open source web analytics platform. I'm a great fan of that. Have you ever heard of it? Anybody use it? Yeah, great. I think more people should do it, it's brilliant. Um, I also run, in my spare time, I run Drupal Somerset, the local uh, user group for Somerset. We do talks, we meet up twice a month in the uh, office. It's all great. Um, right, so why? I believe there always has to be a kitten in the, um, in the slide, so if I put one in, there's our cat. So why this presentation? Okay, um, I bought my first digital camera in 2005. I've been to about 10 or more Drupal events and I've taken over 10,000 photographs. And what I wanted to do, instead of publishing, publishing photographs on Flickr or any other uh, site, I, was, I thought, well, we have to, I use Drupal and I like photography, so why not kind of combine the two and build a site and, to accommodate my photographs? So I set out to build it. Uh, but yeah, what do you need? Um, I think I can skip this slide. I've seen the server, um, and then Drupal itself consists of the core, the contract module, and the theme. Right. So I set out to build it. But if you are new, reasonably new to my, um, to Drupal, and you say, ah, I need a site live. I can't code. Can Drupal help? Yes, of course it can. Because with the, um, the Drupal software and the contributor modules, you can build a site with literally no coding. I mean, there's also different 
can't apply this to every, every client, but it works for me. Um, and I'm, as an example, I'm going to use my personal site, staffmanovernote.com. Um, it has a responsive theme, so this is how you would see it on the computer, and that's how you would see it on the mobile device. Uh, that's a contributed theme by a chap called Dev, a developer Saran. I found it, changed the colors on it. Fairly easy, it works. And you get a nice drop down on the menu. Okay, photos. Um, the what I wanted to do is, I'll get to that in a minute, but the, the actual a digital image has a lot of information inside, and I wanted to find a way to upload it for the system to extract the information, place a marker on the map, and do that all just by me uploading photographs. It's similar to how Flickr works or all the other Instagram or all the other sites. And I thought, well, surely Drupal must be able to do that. So, what I'm using, just a few of, of this page, the areas, this is a leaflet map, um, this is a views attachment to this map, um, I'm using an exposed, I don't know if that's visible actually, an exposed taxonomy filter, and I geolocate, um, that's uh, why you see the uh, marks on the map. Is that okay for everybody? Yeah. Any questions, just shout. Right, so what can you see in this image? This was seen, uh, taken at um, in Glass, Glass and Utah, near where I live. Okay, so this was taken with a phone. Um, <coughs> in that image, there's actually quite a lot of information. You can see how high, the altitude, um, direction of the image, latitude, longitude. And for this, for my site, I'm really interested in these two things, latitude and longitude, because that positions the, um, the image in place on the map. Okay, so if you, I don't know how I use a Mac, but I don't know if there is a similar, I'm sure there's something similar on Windows. Um, but if you look at a digital image, you can get a lot of information out of it. You can see the general info, exit info, and then the GPS info. And again here you see the latitude and longitude. There's loads more, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, has anybody ever heard of Exit Tool? Yeah? Great. The information that um, I just showed earlier, that's pretty much, well, there's exit information. So very, there's a lot of information in every image. And there is a command line tool, there are many other tools, but a command line tool which is really powerful, I only use, I don't know, 1% of it, but it's called Exit Tool. And you can install it on your machine or on your server, and that allows you to extract information from an image and view it. I mean this is all, this, I've recorded this running on my laptop. This shows you a list of, um, a list of images. This is just for, for demonstration. It shows you a list of images and I'm going to, I don't know if this is visible, uh, run the active tool and I'm just going to ask for the information about a certain or a specific image. The 5836 image. And here you can see pretty much the same as what I showed you earlier in the other screenshots, but this is from the command line tool. And I'll scroll up in a minute so you can see, again, the attitude, uh, attitude the altitude, uh, latitude, longitude, position, and that's, in a sense, the information that I'm after. But as you can see, there's loads more um, available. I'll scroll up in a bit. Okay, you can see the phone is made, um, to make a model of the phone, uh, date and time, actually the name of the file. Just wait for it to scroll down a minute. Okay. So loads and loads of information. But this runs on your laptop or computer, or you can even run this on the server I found out last week, which is extremely cool. Nothing. Okay, so this is all the information that's available in a digital image when you've created it with a digital SLR or a phone. Uh, phone. Very interesting. But how do I get that same information in my site? 
Well, there is a module called the EXIF module. So if you go to d.o project slash EXIF, that is the module you need. All that does, it basically does a similar thing to the EXIF tool, so it can extract information from your digital image. <coughs> so how does that translate to your Drupal setup? Is everybody familiar with content types within Drupal? Yeah, no? Okay, what I've done, I've created a content type called photo. And the photo content type has, as you can see, quite a list of fields I've created. And these fields, they link to a, an EXIF uh, variable. And that means that whenever I attach or upload an image to the content type photo, it will, the Drupal system, or the EXIF module, will extract all of this information and save it. So per image, it saves all of that. So similar to what I showed you with the EXIF tool, that's what the EXIF module does. And I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. Okay, so here you can see all the module. Is that okay for everybody? Uh, is everybody okay with that? Yeah? Okay. Okay, well that's one thing. So I can get the I can upload the image, extract the information, but I would like to put it on a map. So this is where Geocoder and um, some other location modules come into play. Everybody anybody ever use Geocoder or any geo location? Yeah? Great, fantastic. <coughs> right, so how does that work? So what I want to do <coughs> I want to tell the system to get the geolocation information from a field within my content type. So how do I do that? So I've got the photo field. So this is where I actually upload the photo. And I have the geo field. I named it geo, but that's the geo field module of geocode. So what it does, I've said, okay, geocode from another field. And then I say, okay, geocode from one from field photo and use the image exif geocoder. So this is the trick, so to say, to actually get the info out of the photo and save it. And then you can map, put it on the map. Is that okay for everybody? I'm going too fast. Alright? Just shout when you want me to slow down. Okay. Um, I don't know how it is with you, but if you take photographs, especially with a smartphone, you kind of snap away. And I thought, okay, how can I um, upload? I don't want to upload an image every time, so I want to bulk upload. So use the bulk media upload module, um, and that's great. What it does is, well, I have a little video of how that works. Does anybody ever use it? Okay, so this um, this goes through. So I've prepared a couple of images. I'm just dragging them in. So now they're in the list. I can set uh, the body field, type something in. I mean, you can see that I did this for um, Drupal Down London. Okay, so I type that in, and you scroll down, and you can use taxonomy. I mean, there are prettier ways of doing, showing the taxonomy vocabulary, but that's our, it's my personal side, so I don't have to spend too much time on it. And what this does is it generates the nodes. And what you can do with um, bulk image upload, you can say, okay, if I press save, do I want to create individual nodes, or do you want to create one node with all the images? And because I wanted to have um, a marker per image, I've said, okay, generate individual nodes for these images. So it does all the hard hard work for me. And now it's genera actually generating the, well, the four nodes. And there we are. So here we have four in the content overview, we have four nodes. Um, it's showing it there. Ah, yeah, so you've got the four nodes there. Loading. And it shows you the same description because that's what I put in. And now it goes to the, I've just uploaded so those four images and it's automatically put them in the, in the banner. Excuse me. And then if we go up. Yeah, so 
And this is a views slideshow that I'm using, where it automatically rotates the images. It should go up. So we're talking about dual coding, but actually we're not coding. And so far, um, the whole this whole site was built by basically clicking away, just finding the modules that you need, um, the, the, the theme, and building your site. And this is the actual geo coding of it all. So again, the four images I've selected, I've uploaded them, and they are now um, placed on the map. So you can zoom and find them. Click on them. So again, this is a, a view, and there's a, a views attachment here, and they automatically go to the images. And this is where the taxonomy of recovery comes in, so you can select by a tag. Are you all okay with how this how this works? Does it all make sense? Yeah? Okay, excellent. Fantastic. And I'm just I'm using photos as um, the the main piece of content. But you can also use other if you're into mapping or if you want to map something, you can instead of using the exit module, you can use for example if you're dealing with addresses, you can use the address field module. And that works in a very similar way. You basically type in an address, it knows where the address is from, and then it can geolocate the address to put it on the map. So that can be quite useful. Okay. So just going into the, um, so that was basically the front bit of it. Going into the view, um, I'm actually using the IP geolocation module. If you want to get your hands dirty a bit with this location business, have a look at that, because that allows you to just download and install it, and it gives you so much functionality right out of the box. It's brilliant. Okay, so this is the, um, we're looking at the attachment here. Um, I'm using the JQFX module for this funky slider at the bottom. Attaching it to the leaflet map. And I'm only showing 10 items. Speed up the loading of it all a bit. And that was it. Okay. Right. So, just a little bit about. Oh, that's not quite visible. Um, I only just noticed that the actual location of the location modules has changed. It used to be much easier, but it's now, if you go to the project, the modules page of Drupal Hall, and then look for the section that says location. That's where you can find all of the looking block. The ones I've used, but many, many more. Okay, uh, I'm using Leaflet, uh, Bulb Media Upload, and I'm also using Drupad. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Drupad. Anybody? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, and this is basically, what, where this is coming from, is obviously I take photographs with my phone. So when you're taking photographs with your phone, you usually somewhere on the way or on the go. But how can you manage your site when you're on the go? I mean, you don't want to get your laptop out all the time. So I looked for a solution for that and found Drupad. There is something else available as well, but Drupad works for me. Uh, this is a, um, a two-way thing, so you install your Drupad module, and then you have to pay for $2.99, apparently. Uh, pay for the Drupad uh, iPhone app. I don't believe there's an Android version, unfortunately. But yeah, get that, and then you can manage your site. This is just these are just a couple of screenshots. Uh, you can manage your site. You actually you can manage as many sites as you have on the go. So you can. I'm just using that as an example. So my site. Uh, you can see the comments, the content. You can create content. You can see the users. You can run cron. You can put your site in maintenance mode, flush cache, or from your um, phone which can be quite handy if you're, I mean this is for my personal side, but if you have a client that's on the phone and you're out and about and you say, oh hang on a minute, let me just put it under maintenance mode or run cron or flush the cache or 
it might fix it. It's obviously a bit tricky, but it can help. It can save you. Um, yeah, a few screenshots. I'm just going to create. This is just these are just a few screenshots of how it works. Uh, different content types you can create. Uh, you can set settings of what it is that you would like to show on the phone. Uh, an example about the blog, so you can give the title summary body. It's basically the same as doing it on your laptop or computer. But it's very handy. Okay? Um, if you're not already involved, get involved with Drupal, but that's probably a useful slide now, because you're all here, which is great. And that was, in a nutshell, my presentation. Really quickly. Thank you. Any questions? If you have a smartphone, or a well, digital SLR, it doesn't really matter, but a smartphone, anyway, a device with a camera um, stores that information in the digital image. Every digital image has that information. There's loads of information in there. But if you have a smartphone or a digital SLR with a GPS built in, you also get that location information. And that's really useful. And um, with these tools, I mean the command line tool, if you just want to use locally or the exit module or other modules, you can actually extract that and display it. Because what I, there's no, I should have put a slide in there, but you know the content type I showed you with all the fields? All that information gets extracted with every image. And I then have a, say, a page, every node, every image is a node. So if you look on, if you click on a marker and click on the image, and the actual image node has also the information about the image, you know, all the exit information, the additional information, and that's quite, um, well, I find that quite useful, and I wanted, I wanted to get that out. Yeah. Sorry? You could then create like views to filter particular yeah. locations. Yeah, that's right. And I found out only last week that the exit tool actually runs, I'm running it on my laptop, but you can also run it on your server, so if you have a VPS server, you can install it on there, in the Linux box, and there's even a Drush, I don't know if anybody uses, uses Drush, but there's even a Drush update hyphen, or no, Drush exit hyphen update or something. And you can use that, you can link in Drush to say automatically create node names or other things. And that's quite, um, quite useful. So if you have, for example, a multi-user site where people, loads of people uploading images, you can automate that via Drush to create node titles and all sorts of funny stuff. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? All right. <laughs> Ten minutes early. Sorry? Ten minutes early. Ten minutes early. Okay. Well, I can go through it again. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Using the iPhone app. Sorry? Using the iPhone app. <coughs> yes. Um, Ticket also allows maybe file uploads from your phone. So, for instance, if you've been out and about taking the photos, yeah. which of course have got the exit information in, mm -hmm. is it possible then to use your smartphone to um, upload those photos as well? Yes. Well, that's, uh, that, that was the initial reason why I wanted to use, um, well, why I was looking for an app that could use my phone. Um, I need to do a bit more uh, job shooting there because I found that. Uh, when I took a photo with my phone and then used a Drupal app to upload it, it I don't know why, but it strips the exit information. Right. And it's really annoying because that's the actual thing I need. Yeah. Um, so what I um, what I did, um, or what I'm doing, I use the app because it's very useful, not just for uploading images, but it's very useful for managing your site. Um, so I use the app for that, and I either upload it through the browser on my phone or just through my laptop. Because I was uploading them and the uploading worked, and then I thought, where's all the info? It's all gone. And it just strips it out. I think, I don't know if Twitter does that as well, or so, some social media sites, they just strip it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Does image cache strip out the exit data? Sorry? 
the image cache, was that, would that strip out the exit data? Would you, would you lose um, it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because um, basically the image, that's quite important, that's actually a really good question, because the, when you upload the image, you obviously have to upload it in its full yeah. glory, for example, or you need to have software on your computer that actually can resize it, for example, if you don't want to upload it too big, uh, resize it, or retaining the, in, the exit info. But image cache is a, well, an image display, so it doesn't really touch the... It retains original. Yeah, it does, it does, yes, yeah. It just plays with it, I mean, plays with it, it just gets it and displays it in the size and thing you want. Yeah, but you need the EXIF, EXIF module to actually extract the info and then you can display it. Does that make sense? Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.